Howdy again everyone, and let's get straight into reviewing what I'm sure will be the telephoto workhorse lens of choice for many Nikon mirrorless shooters for many years to come, the Nikon Z 100-400mm f4.5-5.6 VRS. It's only for Nikon's Z mount mirrorless cameras, full frame or APS-C, and it's on the shelves now at a rather expensive price of US$2,700 or £2,600 here in the UK. That really is a lot of money to ask, but if the lens's image quality is excellent enough, then combined with its useful telephoto zoom range of 100 to 400 mm it could be a useful and relatively flexible option for wildlife shooting and, well, just about any other long range work. I'd like to thank Nikon UK for loaning me this lens for evaluation for a couple of weeks, although, as usual, this is a totally independent review. The lens looks cool, and its build quality is very nice and solid, being a mixture of metal and heavy GT plastics, with a metal tripod mount attached, the bottom of which can be removed. The whole lens is a little on the heavy side, at about 1.4kg or a little over £3, it features a fair bit of weather sealing, including a generous gasket around the rear mount, and it can also be used with Nikon's 1.4x and 2x teleconverters. The lens is very controllable on the outside. Towards the rear, we get a smooth-moving, customizable control ring, as well as a couple of extra customizable control buttons. Nikon's gimmicky but actually kinda cool OLED display sits on the top, able to show you various settings you're shooting at. Then comes the rubberized manual focus ring. It works really nice and responsively with the lens's focus motor, and some further good news is that the lens seems to exhibit no visible focus breathing as you focus in and out. The lens's autofocus motor works silently and accurately. It's not the fastest in the world, but it works fairly quickly nonetheless. Perhaps it would be a bit more confident on a newer camera body. Then comes the large rubberized zoom ring. It works quite smoothly, with a touch of stickiness to it, but it's not too heavy to turn. The lens has its own image stabilization built in. Here's some footage with it turned off, and now turned on. As you can see, it's fantastically effective actually, holding your image pretty firm, although video makers will still want to use a tripod for critical shots, obviously. The front of the lens has a rubber trim to it to prevent damage from accidental knocks, and it comes with a lockable plastic hood. The front filter size is 77mm. Overall, the build quality is excellent here in just about every way imaginable, although it really does feel a little heavy in use. Ok, let's take a look at image quality now. I'll be testing the lens on a Nikon Z7 camera with its 45 megapixel full frame sensor. In camera corrections are turned on for this test. At the widest angle of 100mm, straight from f4.5, we see razor sharpness and excellent contrast in the middle of the image. As for the corners, well, they look just about perfect too. The lens taste is sharp down to about f11, although f16 is looking softer due to the effects of diffraction. Still, a fabulous start here. Let's zoom in halfway to 250mm. At the new maximum aperture of f5, the image is looking really nice here, although it doesn't quite have the same edge of resolution as at 100mm. The further good news is that the corners are looking just as good again. Nice. I found that stopping down to f8 or f11 didn't really make anything sharper, and the contrast is good, but not great. Let's zoom all the way in now to 400mm. At f5.6, sharpness is just fair in the middle, and contrast just ok. Corner image quality is a little softer, but still acceptable. At f8 though, the corners definitely look brighter and sharper, and the middle looks noticeably sharper too. f11 looks about the same, but as usual, stop down to f16 for diffraction to start to cause a little softening. Overall, well, when shooting at wider angles, this lens is riding high. Zoom all the way in though, and sharpness and contrast are just good, until you stop down to f8 or so. For those of you curious, here's how the 400mm image quality compares to the 100-400mm sister lens, the very nice Nikon 400mm f4.5 prime lens. I was a huge fan of the 400mm f4.5, and as you can see here, even though it has a brighter aperture at 400mm, it's considerably sharper, with much better contrast than the zoom lens. Over in the corners, it's way sharper. 
Even stopped down to f8, it retains a considerable advantage over the zoom lens in the image corners and back in the middle, too. So there's your choice between the two lenses, and it's the classic difference between a zoom and a prime lens, image quality in the prime, or flexibility in the zoom lens. Anyway, let's move on and take a look at vignetting and distortion on a full frame camera, with in-camera corrections turned off. At 100mm and f4.5, we see a little vignetting, but nothing too serious, and negligible pincushion distortion. As you zoom in to 400mm, that distortion and vignetting gets stronger. Stop down to f8 though, and those corners mostly brighten up. This lens can focus down to about 1 meter, offering you great magnification for shooting smaller subjects. At f5.6, close up image quality is really hazy though, unfortunately. Stop down to f8 for sharpness and contrast to make a return. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights now. At wider angles, there is some noticeable flaring here, but it's nothing too intrusive. As you zoom in, that flaring stays about the same, but bright lights in a picture begin to affect contrast a bit more. And finally, bokeh. The lens's maximum aperture of f4.5 to 5.6 hardly makes it a bokeh machine, but zoom into your subject a bit, and some clearly out of focus backgrounds are your reward. And the further good news is that they virtually always look beautifully smooth, whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out. Overall, I was fairly satisfied with this lens. It has exceptional build quality and incredible sharpness at wider angles. There's just that question mark of the performance at 400mm. At f5.6, it's just not quite what it should be for a lens in this price range. Don't get me wrong, it's good, that's for sure, but the punchiness I was hoping for only begins to emerge when you stop down to about f8 or so. I guess I'm just one of the small number of people out there who would sacrifice having that zoom range in exchange for having the lovely Nikon 400mm f4.5 lens instead. I'm probably just a little biased there. But for those wanting the flexibility of its zoom range, it still comes recommended if you can stomach its rather high asking price. What are these lemurs even up to? I could spend all day in that enclosure with them, just imagine how cool it would be to have a tail like that. Anyway, hope you found that video helpful. If you regularly watch them, the videos that is not the lemurs, and you'd like to support this channel to keep it going sponsorship free, then check out my Patreon page down in the description below. There, supporters get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, and thanks to all of you for supporting this channel. Take care, and God bless.